Shalom, shalom. My brothers and sisters from wherever you are watching today, we welcome you in the presence of God and we welcome you to our broadcast today. What a day. The Lord is always good. And today again, the Lord has given us the privilege to come in His presence to worship Him uh, through the media, to come in His presence to worship Him through YouTube, our Facebook. Wherever we are, we are sending our greetings to you all. And I trust that God has been able to keep you all safe. We are going to uh, spend a great time in the presence of God in worship, in worship, in worship, worship and worship. You know, we always like to start our our, our, our service with a worship. So we're going to worship God. We're going to sing for Him. Then I'm going to uh, speak to you the Word of God today. And the Word I will speak to you today is about Antichrist and the false prophet. That the Word I will share with you. But let us just open this uh, moment of, 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 of uh, you know, a moment of worship with uh, a prayer. If we can just bow our head wherever we are. Let, let's just recommend this moment in the presence of God, in the, in, in the hands of God. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, God of heaven, here we are standing in your presence because you have given us the privilege to be. You have given us the grace, the favor to be in your presence. Lord, we are just grateful that we are alive. We are well. We are just grateful, Lord, that we, we can stand before you. You have opened up the doors for us, Lord. We think of your grace. We think of your mercies. We think of everything that you have done for us, Lord, Lord throughout the day, throughout the week. Father, you have been wonderful. You have been gracious. You have been faithful. We, we come and give you glory and give you honor. And this time, Lord, is for you. Father, we want to offer it to you. We offer this moment to you. We want you to receive the glory, the honor, Lord, in everything that we do. In the song that we sing, Lord, in the word that we share, Lord, receive the glory and the honor. Bless your people wherever they are, wherever they are watching. Lord, I pray that you bless each and every one. Father God Almighty, that your hand to rest upon us. Anoint the service, anoint this moment. We pray to you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And the church say, Amen. And a man, and a man, a man, a man. Hallelujah. We give glory to the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us just uh, begin our, our, our service today with uh, uh, singing. Uh, you are the pillar that holds my life. This song has been with me in my heart throughout the week. Uh, but I've just been thinking about how God has been a pillar. And I believe that the Lord has been a pillar to you. A pillar for your family. A pillar for everything that, everything that you do. The Lord is a pillar so that's what we're gonna sing to open our service today let's sing He fills the heavens and 
on the earth He lift me up When I'm falling He will never leave me Nor forsake me He moved the mountains Down the seas He fills the heavens And the earth He lift me up When I'm falling He never leaves me Nor forsake me Yeah, yeah You are the me that I told My life You are the me that I told My life Master Jesus You are the me that I told My life Master Jesus, you are the fear that I've hoped my life. You are the reason I breathe and move. You are the reason I breathe and move. Master Jesus, you are the reason I breathe and move. Master Jesus, you are the reason I breathe and move. You are the reason, you are the reason I breathe and move. You are the reason I breathe and move. Master Jesus, you are the reason I breathe and move. Master Jesus, you are the reason I breathe and move. Sing it one more time, you are the reason. You are the reason I breathe and move. Master Jesus, you are the reason I breathe and move. Master Jesus, you are the reason I breathe and move. Master Jesus, you are the reason I breathe and move. He moves the mountains and the seas. He fills the heavens and the earth. He lift me up When I'm falling He never leaves me Nor forsake me I'll sing it again He moves the mountains Out the seas He fills the heavens And the earth He lift me up When I'm falling he never leaves me, nor forsake me. You are the beat, you are the beat that holds my life. Oh, you are the beat that holds my life. Master Jesus, you are the beat that holds my life. Master Jesus, you are the beat that holds my life. You are the Alpha and Omega You are the Alpha and Omega Master Jesus, you are the Alpha and Omega Master Jesus, you are the Alpha and Omega You are the Alpha, you are the Alpha and Omega Master Jesus you are the Alpha and Omega Master Jesus You are the Alpha and Omega Master Jesus You are the Alpha and Omega You are the Alpha You are the Alpha and Omega Hallelujah You are the Alpha and Omega Master Jesus, you are the Alpha and Omega. Master Jesus, you are the Alpha and Omega. Can you just praise the name of Jesus? Can you just praise His holy name? Just raise up your voice where you are. Thank you for being the pillar in your life. Thank you for being the pillar of your family in this time of trouble. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for.
for being my pillar. Thank you for being my pillar. Thank you for being the pillar of my life. The foundation of my life. Thank you for holding me up when I'm falling down. Thank you for giving me the strength when I'm weak. Thank you for being the light in the darkness. Thank you for being the hope of my life. Thank you for being the anchor. Hallelujah. I just come and bless you, Lord. I'm so grateful, Lord. Grateful for your grace, for your love, for your mercy, for your faithfulness, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you for your hand that holds us up. Thank you for your hand that holds me up. Hallelujah. Thank you because you are the reason of my life. You are the reason why I pray. If it wasn't for you, Lord, I could not breathe. I could not be alive. I'm standing here, Lord, as a witness of your grace, of your mercy. I'm a witness, oh Lord, of your faithfulness. I am a witness of your power. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah. We all come to you, Lord, to bless you, to worship you, to glorify your name. And now listen. He moves the mountains up and the seas. He fills the heavens and the earth. He lifts me up. Ah. When I'm falling, he never leaves me. He no forsake me. This is a testimony. He moves the mountains and the seas. He fills the heavens and the earth. He lifts me up. When I'm falling, he never leaves me, he never forsake me. You know, he never leaves you, nor forsake, forsakes you. He moves the mountains and the seas. He fills the heavens and the earth. He lifts you up when you are falling. He lifts us up when we are falling. Our God, our God and our God. No one else, nobody else can hold like our God. There's no pillar as strong as our God. There is no foundation as strong as our God. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I come to sing for you. Lord, I come to bless you. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. We are proclaiming, Lord, I lift your name on high for everything that you have done for me, for everything that you have given me. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I gave you Praises. I'm so glad you read my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I long to sing your praises. So glad you read my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came, you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came, you 
came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my death to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky Lord I lift your name
Lord, I lift your name on high. You can lift up the name of Jesus. You can lift up the name of Jesus where you are. You can by clapping your hands. Maybe by giving a shout of praise. A shout of praise to the King of Kings and the Lord, the Lord of Lords. Glorify his holy name. You his saints. You his people. You the redeemed. You the, the saved. He has set us free to worship him. He has set us free to praise his holy name. Hallelujah. We lift you up, O oh God. Oh, we lift you up, O oh God. We lift you up, the God of heaven. We lift you up, the Lord of all. Thank you for all you do. How can we thank you, Lord? How can we give you glory? We just come, in, Lord, and bring our offerings of praise and worship to you. We bring them in your presence. We bring them at your feet. At your feet. We come and sing unto you, Lord. We come and pour out our heart before you. In worship, in worship, in worship. Oh, we glorify your name. We give you glory to you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And the church say, Amen and Amen. Can we just again put our hands together to give glory to our Lord, to give glory to our King, to our King of Kings. Again, we praise God for this time. I know we can't drag it uh, uh, too long. This is not a normal service, but we just wanted to take a bit of time to give glory to, to, to God. And, um, you know, we got, we got to say, that we we miss the fellowship, we miss the time where we meet together and we worship because the atmosphere is just electric, it's just amazing, and we are missing those moments. And for those of you who are wondering about why um, have we shut the church, was uh, the government has allowed uh, places of worship uh, to remain open? I think the, the the only reason is first of all, first of all. Um, it's not because the government said that we can remain open, that we should remain open. So we, we have to look at the situation and because of the rate of infection has been going high and high, we as a church, we live in a community. And if we are told that uh, the rate of infection is keeps going up, that means that we live in the community, the same community. That means that they, they, uh, we, they, they, the chances of any one of us being put at risk of catching the virus is even increasing. So then we have to uh, put the safety and the health of our community, of every member of the church as a priority. So we want to come out of this crisis, uh, uh, all of us well and healthy, and we know that the church will be even better uh, than it's, ever, it's never been. I'm pretty sure about it. So for now, let us just praise God and thank God for the privilege that we do have to have the service online, on, on YouTube and, uh, and on Facebook. And we praise God for that. So again, I welcome you, all of you, uh, from uh, House of Prayer Ministries and even those who are not part of the church watching us, we welcome you and we thank God for you. I am going to share the word of God uh, with you. And um, after I've shared the word of God, we're going to sing another song and we will pray. I, I am talking today about the anti, Antichrist and the false prophet. Antichrist and the false prophet. This topic is so important. After last week, after I had spoken about about uh, um, the uh, the the theories around um, around the coronavirus, around what's going on in the world after I had spoken about how Christians should respond uh, to, you know, the theory of, you know, the plot 
or there's something being done I just felt I just felt compelled for me to speak to you about Antichrist and the false prophet basically an Antichrist is someone who denies Christ as we will see it in the Bible an Antichrist is an opposer of Christ is someone who goes against Christ as someone who goes who denies Christ that's why the Antichrist during this time we have heard a lot about the Antichrist and this debate did not start today it has started it, it's every time there is a global issue every time there is a global crisis this comes up in a in, a, in you know among the Christian in the churches and prophet and pastors and and everyone start talking about the Antichrist about about that person who will come up who will be who will leave the word even as we're talking about uh, we're talking about uh, the you know coronavirus passport you know as soon as we heard a coronavirus you know passport before you you, you travel anywhere. There are some, you know, you know, some airlines companies who are asking for you to bring a proof that you had the vaccine. There will be countries where you can't travel if you do not have vaccine. And I heard voices rising up and talking about Antichrist, talking about that superpower, that new order that will rise up against Christ. And one of the reasons why a lot of people or a lot of Christians they are standing against the vaccine. They are standing against whatever the government and the authorities are saying. Is because we are thinking that there is some kind of a plot. And an antichrist is someone who's against Christians, someone who's against uh, our faith, who's trying to get us. So we think that we're going to get the number as in the revelation he's talking about uh, in, the last, in, the, in, in, in the last days. Uh, you know, as the Antichrist will rise up, uh, people will receive a, a number. If you do not have the number, you come by. People are talking about all these things. And uh, I said to myself, I need to respond uh, to what's going on and just to help us as a Christian to understand exact, exactly what's going on. I remember myself as I was a, a, a young, a young, a young you know, Christian at the time. Uh, there was another Pope in the power and I know that all most of the Christian they, they, they thought like the Pope who was before few years ago would be the Antichrist everyone was thinking like it's gonna be him I don't know about you but if if you have been in Christian in Christian environment at every time every time someone else has been designated as an Antichrist as that person who will rise up against faith, against God. At some time, it was uh, Pope John, uh, I think, uh, 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 John, you know, Pope John, who was before Benedict, before the one who's, he, you know, the one who's in the power right now. And after after him, you know, other people have been talking about different people. They've been to even Osama bin Laden. There were some Christians were thinking that he is the Antichrist. He's there to stand against against the church, against faith, and and he he is rising up. One thing you can notice is that uh, throughout the history, all those people that Christian they considered to be Antichrist, they passed away, and the word is still the word, and life still goes on life still goes on all the prediction all the prediction or all the so-called prophecies about the antichrist who will rise up is never come to pass all those people that we thought they were antichrist they've passed away osama bin laden is gone the pope has gone there are even people who thought Barack Obama, there are people, you, you know, there, there has been a lot of prophecies, but the word is still the word and we are still around. It shows you that we have been guessing. And if we have been guessing, that means that have we gone into the Bible and find out what does the Bible talk about Antichrist? Who is it? What is it? When is this going to come? So I want to address that question 
quickly before I talk about the false prophet because it's, it's two things. I put them both in, 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 in the same place because when you're talking about the prediction of Antichrist, you need to be talking about false prophecies. And there have been a lot of pro false prophecies during this time, during this COVID-19 situation, there's been a lot of false prophecies. And it's very important that we talk about false prophet and we talk about the Antichrist. Now, there's only one person in the Bible who has talked about Antichrist. Nobody else has talked about Antichrist. Even Jesus never told people about Antichrist. The only person in the Bible who talked about Antichrist is the Apostle John. Is the Apostle Paul, uh, the, the Apostle John. The Apostle John is the one who wrote the book of uh, uh, John, the book of 1 John, 2 John, and the book of Revelation. And the book of Revelation. So he's the one who is who wrote about Antichrist. So we need to go and ask the Apostle John what is he talking about when he's talking about the antichrist who will rise up who will come in the world what is he talking about so let's uh, uh, see the book of first john chapter 2 verse 18 to 23. first john chapter 2 verse 18 to 23. first john chapter 2 verse 18 to 23. listen to what he's saying Dear children, is, is, is writing to the church, to Christians. Dear children, this is the last hour or the last time. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But they going showed that none of them belonged to us. I think this, this passage is giving us enough information about who the Antichrist is, when it's going to come, and where you can find the Antichrist. Because people have been waiting for the Antichrist, and people are afraid that there is a new order and there is something that is being plotted against christian and the antichrist is rising up listen to what he's saying again dear children this is the last hour and as you have heard that the antichrist is coming right it's mentioning the antichrist and notice one thing the antichrist antichrist is not written with the capital letter at the beginning because when you are mentioning a specific person, capital letter has to come in the front. If you want, if you want to write my name, Charlie, that's first C has to be capital letter. When we're talking about Jesus, wherever Jesus is mentioned in 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 the, in the Bible, it, it, J is in the capital letter. If the, the name of the Apostle Paul or the Apostle John or Matthew, w w whatever name you can name, when it's written in the Bible, it always comes with a capital letter at the beginning. A capital letter shows that we are talking about a specific person, a specific man. But here when uh, the Apostle John is writing that as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, the Antichrist is not written with a capital letter. The A does not come with a capital letter. That tells us that the Apostle John is not talking about a specific person. He's not talking about a specific person because over the years, People have been talking about specific, a specific person. They have been thinking about somebody will rise up as an, you know, as an, as an antichrist. Someone will rise up as as an antichrist. We were thinking about it, or it was going to be a system. We were thinking about like a specific system will rise up, a new order will rise up. That will be an antichrist. But listen, when he's writing about the antichrist is not talking about a specific man is not talking about a specific event is not talking about a specific system because if that was the case then he would have used a capital instead of a 
in small letter. That means that it's something that is out there. That is the first thing that we need to understand. And what we, when we learn about the Antichrist, what we need to understand that we cannot be waiting for the Antichrist. We cannot be looking everywhere, looking for an Antichrist or thinking in the back of our head that there is an Antichrist rising up. There is someone rising up. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? We should not. We should not. If God wanted you to know a specific Antichrist, the Bible would have given you enough detail for you to know. And that is the problem that we, 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 we have in the church. That the problem that we have with, uh, with, uh, with, you know, with us preachers, I would say. We like to extrapolate. We like to say things that the Bible does not say. Or we like to second guess. We, we want to guess what is it the Bible is talking about here. The Apostle John is talking about Antichrist. Oh, who's that? So we, we start looking everywhere for the Antichrist. The Apostle Paul is not talking about a specific person. So stop looking for an Antichrist. Vaccine is not an Antichrist. Whatever the system that is in the place is not an Antichrist. That the first thing that we need to understand is not a specific thing. Now, listen to the, 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 the next word that the, the, the Apostle John is saying. This is very important because it gives us a, 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 a clue. Who is the Antichrist now? Because I'm saying it's not a specific person. But who is it? Now, listen to what he's saying. Even now, many Antichrists have come. Full stop. Even now, many Antichrists have come. So again, the Apostle Paul, he talked about the Antichrist in, in singular. Now he's talking about many Antichrists, which means a lot. Many, a lot. That's another proof that he's not talking about a specific person. He's not talking about a specific event. He's not talking about a specific thing. Because he's talking about many. Not only there are many, he is saying they have come now now not necessarily in our time he's talking about his time remember that now is the now of the time the, the apostle john was writing and the time he was writing they were antichrist so when we are looking for the antichrist all over the place the, the apostle john is saying they are here they are with us and that cannot exclude the fact that even now, our now, your now, there are many antichrists. So it's not the antichrists are not something, some system to come. It is something that is already around. It is something that is already with us. It is something that is among us. That's what he's saying. Even now, many antichrists have come. And this is how we know it. it. We know it is the last hour. This is the Antichrist we're talking about. Many, many, not just one, many. Who is the Antichrist now? And where are they coming from? Listen, verse uh, verse nineteen of First John, the same, the same, the same chapter. First uh, uh, John chapter two, verse uh, nineteen. Now he's saying this. They went out. It means that the Antichrist, the Antichrist, they went out from us. But they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But they go and show that none of them belonged to us. Where the Antichrist came from, and the Antichrist, in plural, they came from them, from the midst. Because he's saying they went out from us. They used to be with us, but they've gone out. They've gone out. So once we are looking for the Antichrist, the Apostle John is saying that some of you may be Antichrist. Some of you may be Antichrist. Antichrist could be among you. Christian who call themselves Christian, they could be Antichrist. People who, people who are with you. He said they were with us. 
but they never belong to us. Because if they belong to us, they would not have gone. Now they're gone. They're gone. And that's what they are, the, the, the Apostle John, he is talking about. You know, so some believers, they believe that uh, uh, there is coming a word ruler, someone. A word ruler. We we're thinking about someone who will come and, and take the throne and the seat and who will rule the whole world, who will be the Antichrist. That's what we're looking for. Some people have speculated it's gonna be uh the U uh, European Union because they're getting together and if when they're gonna have a uh, one ruler and then they're gonna put the whole word and you know the people are speculating about these things, but I think that the Bible is clear enough. The Bible is clear enough we cannot speculate because the ant the antichrist or the antichrist is not just one person it could be many and it could be people who are part of us who have gone from us but they have gone against christ and they have gone against the rule of christ and this is something that is uh you know very important to understand now i want to show you uh, a verse that says uh you know if we read verse uh chapter uh, 2 second john chapter 1 verse 7 second john chapter 1 verse 7 it's still john who's who's, who's, who's writing he say i say this because many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. Any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. This verse, he is defining who is the antichrist. So when you when we study this verse, we can find out who is the Antichrist and how you can spot an Antichrist? Listen carefully what he's saying, 2 John chapter 1, 7. He's saying, I say this because many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. They have gone out into the word. Any such person. Did you hear that? Any such person. It could be anybody. It could be, it could be anybody. Among us, it could be anybody. So we could not be looking at those who are in power. We could not be looking on someone, you know, someone who's got the power or someone who's got the influence. It could be anybody. That's what the Bible says. Any such person is the deceiver, is the antichrist. Now, how do we know which criteria we know the antichrist? He's saying it. Anyone who does not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. Now, we need to go back into the context because the Apostle John is talking about a group of people, a group of individuals who were in the church. And this kind of people, they believed in Jesus. Listen carefully. They believed in Jesus, but they did not believe that Jesus came in the flesh. It may not make sense to you because we live in a different context, but I just want to explain to you uh, so that you, you try to get your head around it. We go back thousands of years ago, as the Apostle uh, John was writing this, there were people in the church who believed in Jesus Christ, but they never believed that Jesus was actually a human being. So they believed that Jesus was, was a divinity. They believed that Jesus was God. They believed that Jesus is God, but they never believed that Jesus came in the flesh. Now, in fact, what they were seeing, what they were seeing for them, what they were seeing, they were seeing a kind of an apparition. They were, they, they were seeing a kind of, a kind of a ghost. It was real. You could see him, but, it was not a flesh, you know, so he did not have the blood, he did not have the flesh. That's why the Apostle John is writing that there are those many deceivers who do not acknowledge that Jesus Christ is a, a king in the flesh. What is the big deal about this? Remember that Jesus, when he rose, he appeared to the disciple and he asked Thomas to come and touch his flesh. 
and actually put his finger into the wound that the nail had caused. The reason for that is that Jesus knew that there would be people who would be thinking like uh, he he never been a human being. It, it, it was a kind of a kind of ghost, a kind of ghost. And the big deal about this is that the Bible says that there is no forgiveness of sin if it's not by the blood of the Lamb. Mm. There is no forgiveness of sin. There is no remission of sin. There is no redemption but by the blood of Jesus. And the saying that Jesus never come in the flesh, it was removing the power of the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. It was removing the power of the blood of Jesus. So it might not look a big deal to you, but a spiritually speaking, it was a big deal for John. For John, it was important that everybody agreed the fact that Jesus came in the flesh and he gave his body for our sins, that his blood was shed for, for our sin. But these people, this group of people, they never believed it. They said, oh no, he cannot be, uh, he, he did not have a flesh. He, ne he never had a flesh. It was just, so for, for, the, for John, that was a big deal. That's why he's calling them Antichrist. That means that we are talking about the same Jesus, apparently, but in reality, it's not the same Jesus. The Jesus that they're talking about is not the same Jesus that I'm talking about. The Jesus that I'm talking about, the Jesus that the Apostle John was talking about, it was a Jesus who came in the flesh, who died for us on the cross, who bled to death, who suffered on the cross and who ascended to heaven. That the Jesus that he was preaching. But the other group, they know we're not preaching the same Jesus. They were still saying Jesus, 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 but it was not the same Jesus as them. Mm -hmm. That's why just to introduce a little bit, when we're talking about false prophet, we have to be careful because I'm saying I'm going to be talking about false prophet and false prophecies. There will be false prophet who will mention the name of Jesus. But what kind of Jesus are they talking about? Mm -hmm. What kind of Jesus are they talking about? When we're talking about Jesus, we're not all talking about the same Jesus. Be careful about that. That's what John is saying, that many deceivers have gone out to the world. And these people, they, are, they do not acknowledge that Jesus came in flesh. Mm. And this is a big deal. The Bible tells us that Jesus was 100% human being. And he was 100% God. If we are talking about the same Jesus, then we have to agree that he is 100% God and he is 100% you, you know, human being. But if you say he's just God, he's just God, he does not have the flesh, then we're not talking about the same Jesus. You're talking about another spirit that you've given the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's why it was a big deal. So the, the, the Apostle John is saying, that this is the Antichrist. The other name for the Antichrist is saying a deceiver. Any such person is a deceiver, is the Antichrist. So, in other words, an Antichrist is anyone who is preaching another Jesus than the Jesus of the Bible. Anyone who is serving another Jesus than the Jesus of the Bible. The, the Jesus who came in flesh, who was born through Mary and Joseph, and the Jesus who went on the cross, who died, who gave himself as, as a ransom for our sins, the Jesus who ascended to heaven. That is the Jesus that we're talking about. And if someone is not talking about that Jesus, it is an antichrist. It is an antichrist. I hope that makes sense to you. I hope that helps you because I need to jump onto the false prophet now. Now, John, who is talking about the antichrist, is also warning us about false prophet. First John chapter 4. First John chapter 4 and verse 4 it says dear friends do not believe every spirit but test the spirit 
to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. The Bible tells us that we should not believe every spirit. But we should test every spirit to see whether they are from God. Why? Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Many false prophets. And when you look at uh, Christian uh, sphere or Christian environment, one thing you notice is we do have a lot of prophet now. A lot of prophet. But how many of them are really true prophet? And how can we know which one is the true prophet and the false prophet? And that, that is an exercise that I am trying to do and to give you the tools so that you understand how to spot a true and a false prophet. But I need to lay the foundation to tell you that there are a lot of a lot of them out there, a lot of false prophet. Every time you've got something good, you've got a, a lot, a lot of the wrong one. A lot of the wrong ones, the fake one. Every time you've got something original, you're going to have the fake. And sometimes you've got more fake than the original. And the truth is, out there, a lot of them, a lot of them. First, first Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20 to 22. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20 to, 20 to 22. The Bible says this, Do not treat prophecies with contempt. But test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. Again, here the, the, the Apostle Paul is, is writing to the church, writing to us that we should not treat prophecy with contempt. So what we are trying to do here, we are not trying to look at the prophet with contempt. No, we respect men and women of God, those that God has called, those that God has given the gift to prophesy or, or to help the church or or to bring people into the right path. But what we are saying, the Apostle Paul is saying, but we need to test. That means that every time we are facing a prophet, every time we are dealing with a prophet, we need to examine them. Mm. We need to test them. You cannot be naive. You cannot be gullible. You cannot just stand there and say, is my mind of God, is my woman of God. Just because he has given you a word of the Lord. Just because he has given you a word, he has said something about your life. That, that looks to be true. You have to be careful. You've got to be careful. Who is ministering to you? Because usually what we think, that because he has given me the word, because he has spoken the word to me, because he has said something, that I know is true, then is the true prophet of God. But we need to be careful because we don't have a lot of other stuff that may look like prophecy. Like what? The Bible tells us, for instance, they are sorcerers. Sorcerers. People who practice, who practice uh, sorcery. These people, they can tell you something about your life. We've got divination. Divination. We do have a lot of other practices. Fourth, you know, fourth, uh, fourth tellers, for instance. They can tell you something about your life. So it's not every time someone tells you something about your life, about an event in your life, about something specific about your past or your future, whatever it is, that that person is a true prophet because we know that even the spirit of the, the devil can tell people what to say. That is that is something that we got to be very, very careful. And the Bible forbids sorcery. The Bible for, forbids divination. The Bible does not like false tellers. The Bible does not encourage, encourage us as Christians to go and consult or, or, or see these people. The Bible does not encourage us to go and see astrologers, for instance. People who can read your 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 hands, 
They can look at your hands and tell you about your future or about the past. The Bible does, does not encourage you to do that because the Bible says they are not doing it with the Spirit of God. They are doing it with the spirit of the devil. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about false prophet or prophet, don't just look at what they are telling you. You need to look at deeper than what they are telling you. Now, what you need to be looking at when we're talking about true prophet, and false prophet, what are you going to be looking at? The first thing is this, listen to what they say about Christ. Listen to what they say about Jesus Christ. Right. The problem is when a prophet is talking about Jesus Christ, we say he's talking about Jesus Christ. That means that he's talking about the same Jesus. I've already told you the fact of mentioning Jesus does not mean that we are talking about the same Jesus. That's why you need to listen about what he's talking about Jesus. And I showed you that John, when referring to Antichrist, he was saying that the Antichrist are people who are talking about the Jesus that he was not talking about. People who were not acknowledging that Jesus came in the flesh. So they were talking about Jesus in a kind or in a different way than he was talking about, about Christ. So when you want to spot a true prophet, or a false prophet, you need to see what is talking. What exactly is he talking about, Jesus Christ? And one of the thing you notice is that false prophet they talk about Jesus Christ as the giver of wealth, as the giver of health, mm -hmm. as the giver of 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 abundance, as the giver of prosperity, mm -hmm. as the giver of everything that is good. Jesus came to give you money. Jesus came to make you rich. Jesus came to make you healthy. You can't be sick if you have Jesus. You're going to be victorious if you have Jesus. So the, the side of Jesus they're trying to sell is not necessarily the side that the Bible is selling to you. Listen carefully here because as I told you that the Apostle John said that the Antichrist they are talking about Jesus, but not the Jesus who came in the flesh. They're talking about the Jesus who is God. So they are saying a part of the truth. But they are not, they're not talking about the whole truth. And a part of a, a, a truth that is not whole is no truth at all. A truth has to be whole. If you tell me 50% of the truth, but 50% of the lie, it's all lie. So what the people of the time of John, they were saying it was part true that Jesus was God, but Jesus was also a human being. He came in the flesh. So what we see today is the prophet who does not tell you the other side of Jesus. They tell you about the other side of Jesus. They tell you about the Jesus who gives wealth. They tell you about the Jesus who gives money. They tell you about the Jesus who gives prosperity, who makes you prosper. He came to give you life and life in abundance. As if life in abundance meant a lot of money. A lot of money. And many people are seduced by that sort of gospel, that sort of message. Because when you talk about money, people will run, people will run after you. If you promise people you're going to give them money, people will run after you. If you are preaching something that is so appealing, people will run to you. But the truth is, in all these people who run after this prophet who preach prosperity, how many of them they get prosper? How many of them? You know, I have seen people believing the, they believing the prophet. That prophet who's a millionaire. They believe in the prophet. They're sending money to the prophet. But you look at them, what can they, what, you know, what can they show for it? They have, no, they have nothing. Most of these churches, full of people, thousands of people, they are there. You do have a prophet who is a millionaire, but you do have people who are suffering, people who do not have even food. There will even be people who do not have enough food in their, in their homes and they will give to the prophet. They can't give to the parents. They can't help the parents, but they are sending money to the prophet. They cannot give to those who really need it 
they give to the prophet because they think by giving to the prophet, I will tap into his blessing. I will tap into his grace. I will tap into the anointing. There is no anointing. There is no anointing. What it is, it is a manipulation. Manipulation. And someone said, in fact, if, if, if you are a manipulator and if you are a liar, you are more likely to be accepted and get rich than if you were truthful. If you have to say the truth, People don't like you. People don't accept it. The truth is, Jesus said, if they have done this to me, they would do that to you. Jesus suffered. He went on the cross and he said, whoever want to follow me should take his own cross. He should deny himself and follow me. That is the gospel that Jesus said. But that is the gospel that they don't want anyone to hear. Because if you hear that, you will run away. I don't want to take the cross. But the truth is, you cannot follow Jesus if you don't take your cross. The cross means the pain. There will be along the way a lot of crying. There will be along the way a lot of pain. There will be along the way a lot of, a, a, a lot of difficult moments. Just as Jesus suffered, we will suffer the same thing as he did. But he said this. At the end, I will give you the crown of life. Amen. So he has promises that we will succeed. He has promises that we will, uh, we will reap. But he is also told us and warned us that we will suffer. But they are selling us just one side of the story. That you will prosper. You will have money. You will be rich. Everything, everything will be well. And a lot of them, they come dressed up really nice. And driving very beautiful car. I'm not against someone dressing up really well. I'm not against someone driving a, a, a beautiful car. I'm not against that. But what I'm saying is sometimes all that is deception. It's deception. We want to sell you something and we need to portray ourselves in a different way. If I'm selling you prosperity, I need to show you that I'm prospering. Because I can't preach to you prosperity and myself, I'm not prospering. You look at my house, you look at my car and they go like, but he's preaching me prosperity. You look at his own life. So they, they try to live a lifestyle that matches what they're preaching. But in reality, it's all fake. It's all fake. That's why we call them fake prophets. They've got a lot of money or they, they, they've got a lot of influence. But what they say is like, every time they stand in front of you, they tell you what you want to hear, not what you need to hear. And the problem is they are lying and lying and lying. Lies, they're never going to save you. Lies, they're never going to change your life. Your life will remain the same until you, you know the truth. And the Bible says you're going to know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Until the day you know the truth and you begin to live according to the truth that God has given to you, that day you will be free and you will live a different kind of life. Amen. So listen to, to, to what they're saying about Jesus. Listen carefully. But that also means that you need, you need to know what Jesus said so that you know, uh-uh, Jesus said that, but that's not, that's not it. That's not everything. He said another thing. He said another thing. What are they talking? What, what are they saying about Jesus? What are they saying about Jesus? And it's very important that you understand this. It's very important that you understand this. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2 to 5. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2 to 5. Listen to what the Bible says. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to the parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, no lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. This is what the Bible says in the last days. So we are in the last days. And the Bible says that people will be lovers of them of themselves and lovers of money. We love money so much that, you know, 
If someone promises you that the you know, gospel will give you money, Jesus will give you money. You will follow that Jesus. You will follow that Jesus. If someone is promising you that uh, Jesus will give you everything, abundance, and you, you know, if you were looking for a, a, a husband, you're going to get a husband, a, a, a wife, or a job, or a car, a house, you will follow that because people are lovers of money. And what we need to make sure of is that Jesus... Jesus never talked about us getting rich with money. He never. Jesus was preoccupied by the eternal life. And he's saying, what the point of you having all this and losing your own soul? What the point of having all this? Today, we are talking more about money and money and money and everything else. But Jesus said, do not worry about all these things. It's the kingdom of God. It's the kingdom of God that is most, that is most important. So when the, your prophet, is he bringing you back to the kingdom of God? Is he showing you the way back to God? Or your prophet just talking to you about what you're going to have? Most of the prophecies today is just about God is showing me that your business will prosper. God is showing me that you will be a great man, a great woman. God is showing me that you're going to have children. God is showing me that your ministry will grow. Your ministry will grow. God is showing me, uh, you know, he, he, he's he, he's in, uh, he has anointed you. It's all about what you're going to have, what you're going to have. And we are excited about it. The truth is, it's a lie. Because none of that will ever, ever happen. Because it did not come from God. We need to be careful about this. I'm insisting on this. I'm insisting on this point. And maybe I will have to stop here uh, because I won't be able to finish this. And if, if, if God gives me the grace, uh, I will be able to, to carry on and, and finish it uh next next sunday because i don't want to jump onto uh i don't want to jump onto uh onto things i think I'm, I'm i'm going to stop here for you know for now and I, I just pray that god will help you to to understand uh what the antichrist is and god will help you to understand how you can spot a true or a false prophet uh, you can revisit the video and you can listen to it carefully, listen to it slowly and share with brothers and sisters. Uh, but for now, I'm going to stop here and I'm praying that God will open our eyes so that we will be able to see. May God bless his word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let us sing. Bless the Lord of my soul. Before we come to the end. I want you to worship God with this. I want you to pray to God. Whatever your situation is, just I want you just to commit to God. And sometimes the best prayer is proclaiming what God can do in your life. And I believe that God can do a lot in our lives. The sun, the sun comes up. It's a new day. It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me Let me be singing as the evening comes Bless the Lord Bless the Lord Oh, 
bless you for your for your word today we bless you for for opening our eyes lord i bless you i just pray father that you those of us who have listened to this prayer lord in the name of jesus open our eyes to see give us the heart to understand give us the understanding of your word so that we may not fall in the hands of the wolves in the hands of those who are deceivers help us oh lord to follow you the christ and not to turn into antichrist tomorrow because of our denial of who you are hold us tight in your hand i pray for each and every one of us lord those who are in their home Watch, Father, touch and bless. We pray to you in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. May the Lord bless you all. May his face shine upon your life. May the Lord keep you all safe. And may the blood of Jesus to cover each and every one of you. May the Lord sustain you in all your ways, in everything that you do. Until we see each other again. In Jesus' mighty name. Let us say the grace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Yes, we can finish putting our hands together and giving glory to the King of Kings. I'll see you next week. By the grace of God, may God keep you safe. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.